Now, first of all, to, uh, to Mr. Paul. And now, in the last hour, we've heard uh, President Trump accepting the U.S. intelligence community's conclusion that Russian meddling took place. Would you still call, with what looks like backtracking here, would you still call the Trump-Putin meeting on Monday a success? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, why, why go pick a fight with somebody you don't need to have a fight with? So I think anytime you talk with people, it's a benefit and move in the direction of peace rather than war. I remember very well uh, during the Cuban crisis that I was drafted into the military and Kennedy neutralized all that when he called Khrushchev and Khrushchev was not the champion of civil liberties. And I was very happy about that. So this whole idea that there's some tragic error made by uh, Trump talking to somebody that some people think are, are, is our enemy. Uh, I happen to think that's blown out of proportion and that uh, a lot of people do a lot of this uh, spying on each other. Tell you the truth, I'm really worried about the NSA spying on me and all the other American people. Now, there's a problem, okay. not the problem of what's going on, you know, with uh, what's going on with uh, the, the Russians, because uh, I, I think uh, everybody's doing that and uh, everybody points it out, but we're not a lot of point out how we spy on everybody else. Okay, let's, uh, with regards to, uh, let's keep this on the, uh, on the Helsinki summit. Now, I want to bring in uh, Basima. Now, you've called it a disaster. Explain your views. It is an absolute disaster without question. And it's very interesting that the Republican would question why Donald Trump would quote unquote pick a fight. The United States isn't picking a fight with President Vladimir Putin. He's picked it a long time ago, and he's continuing to do it by interfering in the democratic process in the United States, by proliferating missile systems that are meant to penetrate into the United States national missile defense system. And it is the responsibility of the president of the United United States of America to, do, to defend the interests of the American people. President Trump said that he was going to put America first, but we've heard both him and Senator Paul on the other side of the aisle blame America first. We need to put America first and protect our institutions because they are going to be here far past this administration. Now, I just really want to talk about the criticism that we've heard uh, in the past 24 hours and just how damaging this has been for America. I mean, it's come from the former CIA director, the current head of national intelligence, even the House Speaker. Um, I'll, I'll put this first to you, uh, Mr. Paul. How damaging have these comments been for America and for President Trump? Well, I think it is damaging because I think the reaction has been hysterical uh, reaction to somebody that uh, actually wants to talk to people, negotiate and have diplomacy and move away from war. Sanctions are a first act of war and we're putting sanctions on so many countries. We put sanctions on Russia and that is an act of war. So I would say that uh, Trump should be talking to people. Most Americans agree with that. But then the hysteria comes from the control and the mass media that we have uh, are preaching and yelling and screaming that you have to hate, hate, hate and put on more sanctions move us closer to war. Well, we who have a libertarian message, and I at my Ron Paul Institute, we want peace and we want trade, we want to get along, and we want to react reasonably and intellectually against what's going on and not to yell and scream and try to motivate but people I just want and to, scare everybody to jump into in there, have, have um, war. Mr. Paul, just want to, you're calling this hate, hate, hate. But the sanctions are not an act of war. The interference by the Putin administration and the Russian government into United States institutions is an act of war. The sanctions are a necessary response of strength, saying that we recognize what you've done, we are not going to let you get away with it, and we will not allow you to do it again. I mean, what you're saying is, like, we should just lay down and be a doormat and let anybody come in and interfere in our elections anytime Mr. and not call Mr. them out Paul, on it. That's um, not can, responsible Can you respond to, to Basima there? And do you think that more sanctions should be put on Russia? 
absolutely not. We should be get, getting rid of sanctions because how would how would uh, she or how would anybody react if sanctions were put on us? We don't have sanctions put on us because we're powerful. We have more nukes than anybody else. We spend more money on military than everybody else put together practically, and therefore we dominate the financial market. So people have to listen to us. Nobody. But if we had sanctions put on us and we were denied our trade with other countries and other other individuals, we'd consider that an act of war. So I, I just think it's strange that, uh, you know, that all of a sudden that uh, sanctions are a wonderful answer. They really don't work. Okay. And if you're moving toward war and I if would you just want urge a cold the war, to go back to, to third grade it. math order of operations here. The sanctions were a response to an act of war by the Russian government. Okay, I just want to move this forward a now a, We're not initiating a bit. That. Uh, Basima, to, to you first, do you think that this benefited America in any way at all, and, and possibly even make it make America safer? Absolutely not. For some reason, the president of the United States needs to go on a global tour of embarrassing the people of the United States of America. He's made a point of consistently insulting our most loyal allies, our, our most loyal friends and partners. And for some reason, he enjoys having these back-slapping photos with autocrats and dictators around the world, and consider, um, including Kim Jong-un and President Vladimir Putin, because somehow that helps demonstrate that America is strong. It doesn't. It gives these leaders the legitimacy that they crave, the authority that they crave. He's buying into it by by negotiating with them directly, and he's not even prepped properly to do it. This is not the okay. way that a country is handled, let alone the most powerful country in the world. Mr. Paul, a global tour of embarrassment, is that what your president is doing? No, no, I think he's, he's doing the right thing. And you just heard the statement for radical neoconservatism. Their main goal is to have an enemy. You can't sell weapons. We can't have uh, $800 billion to a trillion dollars, you know, building weapons to sell and spread around the world to maintain our empire. And she speaks that position. She speaks for the military industrial complex, couched in war of patriotism and freedom and safety. Of course, if we, if Trump would not have engaged uh, uh, with Putin, we would have been President less. President Donald Trump but suggested not... having a military parade earlier this year, and you're saying that I have the military-industrial complex. I mean, he ran yes, and he, he initially said that he wanted to modernize and our nuclear does, weapons does, arsenal. He, I mean, he ran he, on a platform does, of proliferating weapons of mass destruction. Okay, I just want to, you know, start to wrap things up now. What happens next? Because we've seen what looks like backtracking, absolute backtracking. Um, where is, uh, let's see, the credibility now between uh, the president and his intelligence officials? First of all, to you, Mr. Paul. Well, I, I don't know exactly what you're referring to on credibility. I think that. Uh, uh, Donald Trump has a problem with that because he's on again and off again. My institute praises him when he does the right thing, and we criticize him severely when it looks like he's enhancing the military industrial state. And unfortunately, we have to go after him about 80 percent of the time. So when he does something right and proper and moving toward peace, we compliment on him. But then the hysteria comes out. I think the hysterical reaction is a sign of the weakness of the neoconservatives because they're scared to death that peace is going to break out. This idea that we're ready to go to war against Russia or Russia is going to commit war against it, that is so preposterous. Can I just they ask you, Mr. Paul, why, sorry to interrupt you, why you call this hysterical when you're talking about here, the former CIA director, even the, uh, the, the no, no, but, but also the House Speaker, people that are, you know, very important, very influential criticizing well, we have CIA directors and ex-CIA directors that have been proven liars to the Congress. So that, that's the reason. Our CIA, matter of fact, uh, we're, we're way too much involved because our CIA, we're in 120 countries, our CIA and our, our mil and military people are around the world maintaining I would just like to point out the hypocrisy of the conservative position criticizing our intelligence officials who risk their lives for us every day while criticizing Democrats for wanting to abolish an institution like ICE that endangers people I, I, I regularly think, and separates families. There is so much hypocrisy well, in that See, statement. where you're wrong on this, 
where, where you're wrong is you're dividing up conservatives and liberals, and we're not in that category. We're not in the category of Republicans, Democrats, because there's a lot of that that goes on. We're on. We're in the position to talk about non-intervention and intervention, the protection of liberty, having trade with people, and working toward peace. That should be the goal. Not uh, not now, but right now we have the disaffected. Republicans joining up with the liberal okay. Democrats who used to hate the, hate the Russians because they were Soviets, but now they love okay, them. I'm afraid I'm uh, going to have to uh, bring this to a close. I uh, wish we could carry on for much longer. I thank you both uh, for speaking to us. That was Ron Paul, former Republican congressman, speaking to us from Texas, and also Basma al Hussein, speaking to us from Washington, D.C. Thank you very much, both of you, there for your insight and speaking to TRT World. Thank you.